Hello, this is Pretty Guardian, and today I'm excited to be bringing you our final mobile game for this series, Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is an action RPG that came out in September of 2020, so ultimately not even that long ago. Overall, 2020 was a really dry year for me as far as gaming goes. I understand why that is, but we just didn't get a lot of really solid releases for the types of games that I'm interested in. And that's okay, but I say all that to say that I was really excited when Genshin Impact came out. It just seemed fun and bright and colorful, and I was ready to be impressed. And I'll say that this game did not let me down. It is made by a developer called MiHoYo, and this is not their first rodeo when it comes to games like this. They have another one called Honkai Impact. It is super popular on the App Store. What I will say is that this game Genshin Impact is very similar, but on just such a much bigger scale. This is one of the biggest, most in-depth mobile games that I've ever seen. Just beautiful graphics, big open world for you to explore, and lots of interesting like little puzzles and landscapes and details come together to just make this a really amazing game. And it also has a lot of like co-op and multiplayer functionality that's in there as well. So a lot of people compare it to something like Breath of the Wild, whereas I see it as kind of transcending that paradigm a little bit. To jump into our review, I wanted to talk about the soundtrack. And so for most of the soundtrack, I didn't really notice it. I thought it was pretty good. There was nothing that really like stood out. There was nothing really jarring. But then when I reached Liyue, and I was like up on the mountains and climbing around and exploring. I got to one of the vistas and I kind of paused to look out across the beautiful scenery. And I realized there was just kind of this really beautiful song playing. And it had an almost like Chinese sort of sound to me, Western ear, I don't know music, but it was really amazing. Just breathtaking and beautiful and fit the landscape so well. And so then when I looked into the soundtrack for this game, I realized that a lot of care went into it. They had composer Yu Peng Chen. He has over 15 years of experience in composing music, mostly for films. And so when you're playing this game, I actually noticed that there is a very cinematic quality to the soundtrack and the way that it's done. And it's just beautiful. They have like full orchestral music going on. And it's one of those things where when you think about like how much money this game makes, I feel like they really put it back into the game. They put it back into the soundtrack. They put it back into the art. They put it back into the world. And I just couldn't be more excited to see where it goes. So for music, I'm giving this one a five out of five. I think the composition, attention to detail, and just the overall grandness of it all is really worthy of that score. For gameplay, I'm going to give it a four out of five. I had an amazing time exploring the beautiful landscapes, solving puzzles, meeting all these different characters. And it had like a good story that was kind of woven in there as well with different quest types and tasks that you can complete to earn different rewards, that sort of thing. I think at this point they even have like housing mechanics and stuff in there, even though I'm not quite that far yet. But this has kind of become one of those games that you can treat as like a fantasy home away from home. And for that, it definitely earns a four out of five. Where I'm kind of subtracting that one star is because the game does seem to be caught in that in-between space. They've given you a AAA gaming experience, but they're giving you mobile game rewards for that experience. A lot of times after you're done exploring and you're just kind of doing the daily grind and everything, 
the game really does start to feel very unrewarding. I do think they could probably do a little better with that. And also just kind of how they release events and stuff. I would like to see more actual content added into the game. But going back to the fact that it hasn't even been out a full year yet, I'm going to cut them a little bit of a break on that one. For story, I'm also going to give it a four out of five. In the opening cinematics of the game, you have your character and a twin. You can pick male or female options from those and they're fighting some sort of like godly being that seems to be like turning everything into roblox <gasps> it kind of depends on who you pick but i picked the female character so my character was like beaten by this being and her brother is off in the world somewhere we don't know what happened to him we lose our memories we wash up in the world of Genshin Impact, and we have to figure out what's going on, help this world, get our powers back, get our memories back, and find our brother. And it has a really strong start for that first, a lot of people say about 15 to 20 hours of gameplay. It does kind of fizzle a little bit after that, and we are still waiting for more content to come out, but it has fully voice acted, like main story quests, lots of side quests that really flesh out the world. Some that are just kind of pointless, but whatever, I'm here for it anyway. Overall, I think it's a really good story. The reason I'm kind of subtracting that one star there is it has a lot of like silly anime tropes. If you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't. I'm not a big fan of Paimon. My fan theory is she's gonna turn out to be a bad guy. We can talk about that in the comments section. But overall, it's still an engaging story and I do wanna see where it goes. So four out of five. For art style, I'm giving this game a five out of five. It has some of the best character designs that I've seen in any game ever. I think they're absolutely wonderful. They're that right mix of fantastic, but also not completely over the top in a way that would feel out of place for this world. Just as an example, I was playing Edge of Eternity recently and your characters are a little more mundane looking than these characters, but then they carry around these gigantic over the top weapons that kind of look bizarre, honestly, compared to your actual character in the rest of the world. That's not the case here in Genshin Impact. So you have good character designs, you have this gorgeous world, it just seems to have a really high level of polish and I appreciate the attention to detail and the effort that went into that. The last thing for us to talk about in this review is the cash shop. And for a long time, I wasn't a big fan of the cash shop. I think that the catching rates for getting the good champions is way too low. I've been playing a long time and I still don't have like a five star top ranking champion which kind of sucks i'm not super upset about it or maybe i did finally get a five star i'll have to double check that but it took me a while way longer than it should have i still think the rates are sucktastic and they can do a little bit better with that one of the things i do like about their cash shop is that it has a low monthly pack that you can get as kind of like a subscription for the game and it doesn't just instantly reward you with premium currency you get it over time so it kind of strikes this balance where it actually encourages you to play the game so you can only be so much of a whale. You still actually have to log in and play the game to continue getting ahead. It just kind of helps smooth that progression out a little bit. So with all that being said, I decided to give it a four out of five. What would make it a five out of five for me is if they added more cosmetic items, maybe a way to actually unlock characters, um, just kind of smoothed out some of those edges in the shop. To me, it would be a lot nicer to say pay 25 or 30 bucks and actually be able to just select the champion that you want rather than have to pay $10 and pray to the gods or whatever the case may be. When I went to look for negative reviews for this game to kind of help round out the review that I'm delivering to you today. I didn't find any on the Google Play Store. It has a couple like two star reviews. It seems to be people with kind of like specific problems for their system or their gameplay experience that I don't think would really apply to most people. So I kind of expanded my search a little bit and ended up on this article from Kotaku where they kind of go on this 
little tirade about how the game doesn't really respect players' time. Loosely speaking, they're probably right. You can sink a lot of time into this game and ultimately not get very far. And I think that that's valid feedback. But at the end of the day, I still loved it and I'm definitely going to be coming back. So to wrap up our review here, let's go ahead and run through our scores. Music, we gave the game a 5 out of 5. Gameplay, 4 out of 5. Story, 4 out of 5. Art style, 5 out of 5. And cash shop, 4 out of 5. This brings us to a grand total of 88%. We might have a contender for number one on my list. If you want to see that list, you're going to have to wait until next week. In our final wrap up video, I'll be sharing my final ranking of all the games that we played so far, and I can't wait to share it with you. So thanks so much for watching today, and I'll see you next week.